Lord. The Eucharist we celebrate is our Passover from death to life in Jesus risen. Let us commit our life to this Paschal mystery of the glorious Christ our Lord. Our Mass intentions are Embita, Marie M. Cruz, Cynthia Mesa, Patricia M. Sablon, Michael Gogui, Christian Rodriguez, Davina Ada, Paul and Rose Calvo and family, Ada family, Art and Kathy Ilagin, Nathan Gogo, Lourdes Eclavea, Proem Formorum, Elizabeth D. and Sean E. Mendiola, Brianna Kunzman, George and Amelia Borja, Joel Balan, Zachary Sinicholas, Euphrosina D. Huelgas, Paterno B. Cabral, Laura Chargaloff, Elizabeth D. Mendiola, Elizabeth Kinatta, Haley Rossetti, Hugh Dominguez, Francesca and Michael Kitsusu, Animas, Anthony M. Chargaloff, Eva and Dwayne W. Flores, John C. Pablo, John M. Cruz, Jose P. San Augustine, Tomas and Isabel Mendiola, Tomas F. Mendiola, Jose C. and Concepcion Duenas, Von B. Menno, Joaquin and Esther Beneventi, Wayne I. Brown, Marilyn C. Roberts, Gregorio C., Oliva A., Gil A., and Gregorio A. Lujan, Maria A. Lujan Nata, Johnny Cruz, Michael S. Till, Jose A. Lujan, Carmen C. Leon Guerrero, Antonia F. Guerrero, Father Ryan Fernandez, Francis C. Gogui, Francisca C. Francis, Francisco Paulino, Paterno and Concepcion Cruz, Manuel and Maria Paulino, Jose L. Cepeda, Nicasio M. Huelgas, Violeta H. Cabral, Paul B. and Marquita T. Souter, Pedro and Faye Ada, Margaret Ann Fernandez, Maria I. Cruz, Francisco A. Rivera, Franklin C. Blas, Pete Seguenza, Carmen Leon Guerrero, Francesca Fumiko Taidinko, Jacob Aaron Perez Gumbar, Jose L. G., Mary and Matthew Antalan, Richard Gonzalez, Teresita C. Sands, Roki, Julia, and Joseph Borja, Cecilia Guzman, Josefina Manuel, James, Jimmy, and Manuel Jr. Paulino, Patricia Beneventi, Michael O'Keefe Oris. Spe special intention for all medical healthcare professionals locally and around the world, all first responders and essential government officials. The presider for our Eucharist, Archbishop Michael Jude Burns. Let us please rise and together pray for the healing victims of abuse. Holy Spirit, comforter of hearts, heal your people's wounds and transform brokenness into wholeness. Grant us the courage and wisdom, humility and grace to act with justice. Breathe wisdom into our prayers and labors. Grant that all harmed by abuse may find peace and justice. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. i 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we enter into these Easter mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal bought by your Holy Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, 
not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Pasco victim, give thankful praise. Christ never sinned this his sheep, now he saves. Death and life contended in dreadful strife. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Glory to you, Lord. on the first day of the week mary of magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb so she ran and went to simon peter and to the other disciple whom jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, and the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
The first reading today it says Peter proceeded to speak. Well, he was speaking to just one man, a Roman centurion named Cornelius. Cornelius had, through his time in Judea, become intrigued by the Jewish Torah and the moral lifestyle that the Jews lived. And he was certainly curious about the rumors that were going around about Jesus of Nazareth, especially the one that says he had died and then rose from the dead. So Peter expands upon Cornelius' knowledge and tells more of a, a, a short précis of the acts of Jesus about his teaching, about his healing, his casting out demons, and rising from the dead. Cornelius believed and was baptized and became the first Gentile to join the Christian community, all on the testimony of one man, a man named Peter. And in this reading, it says, This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance. He believed by the power of witness. But here we are, in the 21st century, we know that in the first letter of the Corinthians, St. Paul recounts that Jesus appeared to more than 500 people all at the same time, and most of whom were still alive at the time of Paul's writing, which would have been about 20 years ago. So if there are 500 witnesses, uh, there's a good chance that people could find him and ask him if is it really true? Or does this become like a game of telephone? You know the game. You, you start with the first person, give him or her a message. He or she passes it on to the next one, to the next one, and to the next one. And the message that began in the beginning ends in a completely different place. After all, we are a people who regard, or we are a generation that regards science and technology as the only true source of the truth. So how do we, 2,000 years from the alleged event of Jesus' resurrection, what is the contemporary evidence? How do we know? that something amazing happened 2,000 years ago. The 930 crowd might remember this from last year. My answer is, well, it's you. Now, you must understand that I am fully aware that there is no one in the pews here today. But I have strong reason to believe that there are many hundreds of you watching through the live stream. And so here we are, participating in a kind of a religious play, a play that has been running Sunday after Sunday, simply because the man Jesus told 11 men to bless some bread and some wine, to tell the story of the man Jesus, and to partake in that blessed bread and wine so that everyone might partake of it. 
And again, we're touching a sore point because we cannot participate in receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ because of these really, really weird times. But still, we're here. Why? Because he said, do this in memory of me. So obviously, we've taken his word for it. We followed his command. For the past 1,990 years, people like you and me have been doing this Sunday after Sunday after Sunday in virtually every part of the world. Of course, really, where the Mass began was in the days of Pentecost. Right after Pentecost, it says the disciples devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We're doing that right now. To the fellowship, we pray together. And to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. That has formed the shape of what we're doing here today. And it hasn't been substantially altered for those 1,990 years. By the time of St. Justin Martyr, he recounts around the age 130 AD. He describes the liturgy of the Christians to the Roman officials. And the descriptions virtually map right on to what we do today. We have to remember that many of these years in which the Mass has been celebrated were years and times of persecution, times of warfare, times of plague. Does that sound familiar? And we keep coming. Of course, we all have various reasons why we go, and really there's no bad reason. I've heard any number of reasons why people go to, to Mass. It's a kind of a habit. I feel better afterwards. My family always goes. My dad sings in the choir. I really like my priest. My friends go there. Or. It's just part of our culture. That's just what we do. But we still go. Something must have happened 2,000 years ago that sparked this. You know, I looked up on Google that font of wisdom and knowledge that the longest running play in theatrical history is Agatha Christie's Mousetrap. It's gone on for 60 years. Not even a drop in the bucket. Because the Mass has been running Sunday after Sunday for just about 2,000 years. By my lights, that's an indication that something really amazing happened. And we, by the very fact that we're here, by our presence, by our participation, are witnesses to the fact that Jesus Christ has, has been risen from the dead. And our lives are forever changed because of that. When will it stop? When will it ever end? I mean, some people I, I, I've read about say that they think hey, because you know the mousetrap will go on for all you know for till eternity. Well, that's probably not going to happen. But here's when we will stop. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty show? Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. By raising Jesus, God changed sin and death to grace and life. Confidently, we raise our prayers to the Holy One. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or anxiety or discomfort, that they may find recovery and relief in this holy week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, especially those in our local health care system, that God grant them strength in their continued service to our community and protection from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who cannot be with us during this celebration due to illness or self-quarantine, because of their deep desire to receive Jesus sacramentally into their bodies and souls, we offer a spiritual communion for them. May the Lord in his mercy grant them strength and healing through this difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's love to comfort the family and friends of those who have gone before us, especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus. May their souls and all souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory and power, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son. Hear the concerns we offer you through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high. In the, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you as if you were already there. Keep me close to you each day. Amen.
May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Thank you so much. <laughs> stay safe, stay well.